وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وإن شرح أوف ذي كتاب أخلاق حملة القرآن باي الإمام الأجري رحمه الله وإكسبلينينغ ذا بوك وي ستوبت أت وذي أوث رحمه الله سيد والحمد لله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وله الحمد في الآخرة وهو الحكيم الخبير يعلم ما يلج في الأرض وما يخرج منها وما ينزل من السماء وما يعرج فيها وهو الرحيم الغفور The author رحمه الله He brought the uh, verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Alhamdulillahi And we've previously taken that there are five uh, suwar in the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the hamdala with. Surah Al-Fatiha, Surah Al-An'am, Surah Al-Kahf, Al-Sabah, and Al-Fatir. So those are the uh, five suwar in the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he starts the uh, alhamdu with. So the author, rahimahullah, here he brings the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah says, Alhamdulillah, he praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alladhi the one, lahu ma fi samawati, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. That which is in the heavens and that which is in the earth are of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mulkan wa abidan. All of the things, ما في السماوات وما في الأرض, all of them are under Allah's kingdom, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, all of the things that are in the samawat, يعني in the heavens and in the earth, are all slaves of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are all his slaves, they are all his creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala. They fall under Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala's control. يعني Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, controls them. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala has power over them. They cannot leave his kingdom subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ And for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the praise of the akhirah. Now, the akhirah, why was it specified that the hamd is for Allah in the akhirah? Isn't Allah tabarak wa ta'ala uh, does he not have hamd in the dunya? Does he not have it? Sheikh Abdul Razak uh, ibn Abdul Muhsin al Abad he mentions, he says, خص الحمد في الآخرة مع أن الحمد لله في الأولى والآخرة لأن الآخرة يظهر فيها من حمده والثناء عليه ما لا يكون في الدنيا. The hamd is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the dunya and it is also for him in the akhira. But the hamd becomes very clear. You see, Yomul uh, Qiyamah. Akhira, it becomes clear. Uh, and that he is praiseworthy, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why the ayah specified Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with hamd Yomul Akhira. Even that though he has hamd in this dunya and he is praiseworthy in this dunya, but it really becomes very clear that he is the one who is praiseworthy uh, the day of judgment. Because everyone will realize they have no strength and no power. And no one has control over anything except him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa huwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-hakim or the wise one. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has complete wisdom subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of Allah's actions that he does, all of them are based on wisdom. And Allah does not do anything unless there is an ultimate wisdom in it. So everything he does subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of them are with wisdom. Sometimes we know the wisdom behind some of the actions of Allah. Sometimes we know, and sometimes we don't know. And just because we don't know, it doesn't mean there is no wisdom. 
Also Allah Ta'ala is Al-Khabir. Al-Khabir means Al-Muttali'u ala bawatin al-umur. He is the one who knows the inner matters of things. Yani Allah has knowledge of the inner matters of things. Yani every issue, there's a zahir and a batin, a, an apparent and a hidden. Humans only see the apparent. Lakin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wahda is the one who knows bawatin al-umur, the hidden things in issues. Wa khafaya al-ashya, things that are hidden from our eyes. He's the only one who knows it subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same way he knows the outer affairs and the outer matters, he knows the inner matters, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Khabir, that's what Al-Khabir means. Ya'lamu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows. Ma yaliju fil ardi wa ma yakhruju minha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows the seeds. And the things that are planted in this earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows it. The things that are dug into this earth, he knows it subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا And that which comes out of the earth, he knows it. That which is put into the earth, and that which, is, that which comes out of the earth, Allah knows it all subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what are the things that are put into the earth? The seeds are put into the earth. And also what are put into the earth? The dead. Our dead ones. We bury them into the earth. and We dig them into the earth. Allah knows it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows where everybody's buried, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows every seed where it's planted, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at that. He knows it all, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, Allah's knowledge is infinite, brothers and sisters. It, it, it has no restriction. He knows all of that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is hidden from him. Allah also knows, وَمَا يَنْزِلُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ He knows, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that which comes from the sky, he knows it subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows what comes down from the sky, he knows it subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows the rain that comes down from the sky. He knows the angels that come down from the sky. فيها, and he knows what ascends to the sky, and he goes up to the sky. He knows it subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who are those that go up in the sky? The angels, they go up into the sky. You see? And also what goes up to the sky is Al-Kalimu Tayyib The good speech And Kalimat Tawheed And righteous speech They also go up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala They ascend to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala Wal-Kalimu Tayyib يعني Meaning good words and good actions إليه يصعد الكلم الطيب والعمل الصالح يرفعه Allah raises the actions and is the actions of the people and their good speed, it all ascends to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa huwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Rahim al-Ghafoor. Allah concluded the ayah with two of his characteristics. These two characteristics are Allah's name subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Rahim and al-Ghafoor. After what Allah mentioned, he concluded it with Ar-Rahim and Al-Ghafoor. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows every single thing that we're doing. The things that we do in private that no one else is aware of. The sins that we commit. The way we disobey Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows it all. He also knows what we were planning to do. Before we even do it. And all of that he knows it. Allah is saying to you, I know everything you do. And I am aware of everything you do. But I am very merciful. I am merciful. And I am also forgiving for sins. Any sins that are committed, any crimes that are done, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is ar-Rahim, the most merciful. And this characteristics ar-Rahim, is مُخْتَصٌ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ It's specific for the believers. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَكَانَ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَحِيمًا Allah to, to the believers only, He is Rahim. Lakin Rahman is used for the believers and the non-believers. Lakin Ar-Rahim is only for the believers. Ar-Rahim is specific and unique for 
the believers. Now, the scholars like Al-Allam ibn Al-Qayyim and others, they mentioned that the Hamd has five pillars that he stands on. Arkan and the pillars of Al-Hamd are five. The first character, the first pillar, sorry, the first pillar is Hamid, the one who is doing the Hamd, the one who is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is standing up to praise Allah. That's the first pillar in which the Hamd consists of. There's a Hamid, a person who is praising Allah. Munshi'ul Hamd, the one who is initiating, the one who is doing the praising. That's the first pillar. The second pillar is Mahmud, the one who's being praised. The one that the Hamd is done for. And that is who? Al Mun'im, the one who bestows the blessings. And who is that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third one is Mahmudun Bih. That which we praise Allah with. And what is it that we praise Allah with? The hamd we do for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It comes from the heart and it comes from the tongue. And those are the only two places where the hamd occurs from. This is, the, this is where the difference between al hamd and a shukr occurs. Shukr is on the limbs, on the tongue. And also the heart. Shukr. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the ayah. I'malu ala Dawood al-shukra. Idhan shukr is an action. That's why we have sujood al-shukr. The prostration of shukr. And you're praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're thanking Allah in your sujood. Hamd on the other hand is not an action. Hamd on the other hand is not an action. It's just uh, what you vocalize and what you say and it is also in the heart. The fourth pillar is Mahmudun Alayhi. Mahmudun Alayhi means the reason why you're praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what are you praising Allah for? And this is the ni'am, the blessings that he has done for you. And you're also praising him for what he is subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is again is the difference between hamd and shukr. Okay? Uh, Shukr is only for what you do for me. Whereas Alhamd, it's for what you do for me and for what you are. And what you are, you're praising a person for. And we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he is. Like this ayah that we just took. Alhamdulillahi alladhi lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ardi wa lahu alhamdu fi al-akhirati wa huwa al-hakim al-khabir. We're praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he is. That he is the king of everything. And that everything is under his kingdom. And that everything are his creation and his slaves. So we're praising him for that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fifth is sirah, the form in which you do the hamd. And the ayah showed us how we do it. We say, alhamdulillahi. Okay? Alhamdulillahi. That's the five pillars in which uh, hamd. Uh, stands on. These are the five pillars in which Hamd stands on. The first one is Hamid, the one who's doing the praising. The second one is Mahmud, the one that's being praised, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third one is Mahmudun bihi, what you're praising Allah with, and your tongue and your heart. The fourth one is Mahmudun alayhi, uh, the thing that you're praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. And that is the blessings that he's bestowed upon you, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The abundant blessings that he's bestowed upon you. And the fifth one is sira, the form in which you do the hamd. And that is by saying alhamdulillah. The scholars, they say alhamdu is khabariyatun uh, lafzan uh, insha'iyatun ma'anan. What does that mean? It means when you say alhamdulillah, it's, it's a statement. But what is in that statement is a dua. Yeah, naam. The scholars, they say that Alhamdulillah is khabariyatun lafzan in sha'iyatun ma'anan. It's like when you say to a person, uh, Rahimakallahu. Rahimakallahu. Or you say, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are statements. Yani, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
صلى is a past tense verb and it's past tense verb so you're saying Allah praise the Prophet even that though it is a statement but it's intended for it to be a dua okay it's intended for it to be a dua so when we say Alhamdulillahi uh, even that though it's khabariyatun lafadan, it's insha'iyatun ma'nan, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow his never-ending mercy and generosity and kindness and his favors onto us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the author said, Ahmaduhu ala qadimi ihsanihi. Now, scholars tend to do this a lot, which is that they bring hamd as a noun and then they bring hamd again as a verb. Why do they do that a lot? I mean, they mention, for example, you hear the khatib saying, Inna alhamda, inna alhamda, inna alhamda. That alhamd is a noun because it has alif and lam in there. Anyone who studied basic Arabic grammar will know that. That inna alhamda, inna alhamda, okay. And then after that, he says, nahmaduhu again. He brings it in a verb form. So he brought it in a noun form and then he brings it in a verb form. Why does he do that? Because when you bring it as a verb form, it shows الدوام والاستمرار يعني, Oh Allah, we are still consistent upon praising you. Whereas the noun doesn't show continuation and consistency where the verb does. نحمده, it shows consistency and continuation. And that's why the author here brought it by saying أحمده, I praise him subhanahu wa ta'ala. I praise him. What is it that he praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for? عَلَىٰ قَدِيمِ إِحْسَانِهِ عَلَىٰ قَدِيمِ إِحْسَانِهِ Some of the nusakh of the kitab, some of the manuscripts of the kitab, it doesn't have the word عَلَىٰ قَدِيمِ It actually has أَحْمَدُهُ عَلَىٰ تَوَاتُرُ إِحْسَانِهِ وَقَدِيمِ نِعَمِهِ Whereas here it's, it's turned over, I mean flipped over, which is أَحْمَدُهُ عَلَىٰ قَدِيمِ إِحْسَانِهِ وَتَوَاتُرُ نِعَمِهِ so some of the copies, they have a difference here. But uh, let's cover the one that uh, Sheikh Abdul Razak Abdul Muhsa Abad used. He said, Ahmaduhu, I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and I'm consistent in praising Allah for what? Ala qadim ihsanihi. The word qadim, are we, allowed to, are we allowed to refer to Allah as qadim? Can we say Allah is qadim, old? Is qadim from the names of Allah? that the author used here. Some scholars, they didn't like the usage of the word Al-Qadim. And they were against using Al-Qadim. And from the scholars that have actually spoken about this in great details, or even spoke about it, uh, is Ibn Abi Al-Iz Al-Hanafi. Ibn Abi Al-Iz Al-Hanafi, in the Sharh of Aqidat Al-Tahawiyah, he spoke about the word Al-Qadim. And that Qadim is not from the names of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. And some scholars, they've used it. And the ones who've refused, I mean, the ones who've said, do not use the word Qadim, and the ones who've used the word Qadim, there's a way to reconcile between their, their views. So you might wonder, how, how could you reconcile between two polar, direct, yani two directly proportional views to one another? How can you reconcile between the two? What we say is that the Qadim is two types. The Qadim is two types. There's the unrestricted form of Qadim. And it is Qadim, which is Al Qidam al Mutlaq, the unrestricted form of Qadim, and that's the one uh, which is similar to Al Awwal, where Allah refers to Himself as Al Awwalu, Allah is the first. And that's the one that uh, Ibn Imam Al Ajurri is referring to when he said, Ahmadu ala Qadim Ihsanihi. He means the first one. And that's, where he, that's the one he's referring to. I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's a second type, which is al qidam al nisbi the restricted type of uh, qidam. And it's the one Allah says in the ayah, Hatta aada kal urjun al qadim. Allah mentions subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala qadimi ihsanihi. I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala qadimi ihsanihi. For his uh, blessings, 
his continued blessings, that he is the one who started it. There was no one who came before him that gave us this blessing. He's the first one, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani from the beginning, he bestowed his blessings on his creation and he is blessing his creation till this moment, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will be blessing them until the day of judgment, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَتَوَاتُرُ نِعَمِهِ And I praise him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, for his uh, multitude blessings. وَتَوَاتُرُ نِعَمِهِ means his multitude blessings. The word التواتر, uh, it means التوالي والتتابع, that which is one after the other. Yani Allah Taala's blessings is one after the other. And that's what Allah says in the Quran, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا if you try to count the blessings of Allah, you will never be able to count it. That's what Allah says in another ayah, وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ There is no blessing except it came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's nothing you can actually say, wow, that's good, except Allah gave it to you subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is from Him. وَلِذَلِكَ the scholars they say, and I'm going to conclude with this point, the scholars they mention and they say that showing a gratitude to the blessings Allah has given you, by thanking him for it and praising Allah for it does two things for you. It allows the current blessing that you have to remain. And it brings about for you the blessings that you don't have. The things that are missing from you, it will bring it for you. And Ibn Qayyim summarized it in one line and he said that it is uh, showing gratitude and showing Allah Taala you're thankful for what he's given you. It is Saydun uh, lil mafqudi وَقَيْدٌ لِلْمَوْجُودِ صَيْدٌ لِلْمَفْقُودِ وَقَيْدٌ لِلْمَوْجُودِ It brings for you what you don't have. The things that you don't have, it'll bring it for you. The blessings that are missing from you, Allah will bring it for you. But first, what's needed from you? Thank you for what you have. And also what will happen is that the blessings you do have will also remain for you. And Ibn Al-Qayyim said that these two are all mentioned in one ayah, which is لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ if you show gratitude, Allah will increase it for you. Increase it means what you already have remains and extra is going to be given to you. And that's why it's important that we are consistent in saying Alhamdulillah. I'll stop there inshaAllah ta'ala bi-idhnillah al-kareem and I'll carry on uh, tomorrow for our other session of the explanation for the other part of the book. Uh, anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanak Allahum wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiru wa karatu ilayhi. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.